This is a video capture box intended for gamers. The idea is to offload the task of taking a screenshot every 1 30th or 1 60th of a second, compressing it and saving it into a file, onto a dedicated box, saving precious computer cycles for the game itself. Powered off a USB port, it is meant to be inserted between a computer and a computer monitor, grabbing video off the HDMI input port and outputting it from the HDMI output port. Microphone input allows adding commentary to gameplay, audio line output allows connecting speakers. There is a socket that allows connecting breakout cables for analog signals. A storage device like a memory card or an external hard disk drive can be connected to the USB port. A single physical button starts and stops recording. Let me show how it works. The analog connectors include component video, which is usually used for HD sources, composite video, usually used for standard definition sources, and two-channel audio. Here I connect the power to capture video from an analog device like a VCR. I use RCA connectors. I will record onto an SD card through an adapter. The green light indicates the box is on. When recording starts, this light turns red. All other functions are controlled with remote control. Three buttons on the bottom allow selecting one of the three recording formats. 1280 by 720 at 60 frames per second, 1920 by 1080 at 30 frames per second, and 1366 by 768 at 60 frames per second. You select input signal with the buttons on the top. You can specify whether the source video has old-school 4x3 proportions or 16x9 using a modern TV. To start recording, press REC. To stop recording, press STOP. Easy peasy. Let me try recording of a VCR. Of course, I'm not going to copy the whole movie. This is just a test in the name of science. Remember that analog video as well as more digital standard definition video is transmitted and recorded in interlaced stream with 60 or 50, if you are in the PAL region, images per second. The box converts interlaced video into progressive, either into 60 frames per second for 720p and PC mode, or 30 frames for 1080p mode. Use 720p mode to capture all the fields. Here I am going to capture video from a VHS camcorder. First, I switch from widescreen to 4x3 mode. I'll capture a short clip in 1080p at 30 frames per second, then another clip in 720p at 60 frames per second. The box has three bitrate settings. The highest setting uses 16 megabits per second, which is a healthy rate for AVC codec. Audio is recorded as AAC at 192 kilobits per second. Movement in 1080p video is more jerky because half of the images have been lost. On the other hand, a movie captured into 60p still looks cinematic because no extra frames have been generated. If you wonder whether you can capture a video from Netflix or from a Blu-ray, yes you can. It doesn't mean that you may. You do not need a computer to watch captured videos. The box can play music and videos of the connected media. Capturing video with a device like this is simple, but not without drawbacks. First, my box is picky in terms of media. It seems that it supports only FAT32 file system, despite mentioning NTFS in the menu. It would not record onto SDXC cards and would not recognize an external hard disk drive formatted with NTFS. Despite my analog videos having 4x3 proportions, they have been captured into 16x9 frame. It is correct from the point of view of broadcast video, which stipulates that HDTV is always widescreen. For example, The Wizard of Oz is released on Blu-ray screen in pillar box form. On the other hand, YouTube is more flexible than physical format. It supports HD videos that have proportions different from 16x9 and shows them without black bars on the sides. And here is another issue. When cropped to 4x3 proportions, the image still shows thin black bars on the sides. They have never been supposed to show on a screen of a regular TV. They belong to an overscan area and they should have been cropped by the box. Instead, the box preserved them and as such, the image has been slightly squeezed from the sides. Another issue is black level. 8-bit broadcast video has valid range from 16 to 235. Values below 16 are blacker than black, values above 235 are whiter than white and are not supposed to be seen on a properly calibrated TV set. 
The box recorded black as zero, which is acceptable if you are going to play this video on a computer and the player treats zero as black level. But if you upload it on YouTube, you'll lose details in dark areas of the video. Finally, there is the question of frame rate. Because the box is designed to capture video of a computer, it records exactly at 30 or 60 frames per second, not at 2997 or 5994. Potentially, this means that you may experience a small jerk every half a minute, but this would be the least of my worries, and your computer screen refreshes at exact 60 frames per second anyway. All in all, a box like this is a useful device to capture video of a computer, VCR or even a Blu-ray player. But like most one-button fire-and-forget devices, it comes with compromises. It's up to you to decide whether it's good enough for you. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. Goodbye.